Fun fact, I went to HBCU. Yeah, Norfolk State University in Virginia. Uh, good times, man. I mean, it was a great, as far as socially goes, my goodness, so much vagina. But... <laughs> But when it, when it came down to it, I didn't stick around very long because I, I wasn't ready for, you know, that type of uh, environment. I really wasn't. And, you know, it is what it is. But now we got this article coming to us from Del Marva Now. And I want you guys to notice the uh, similarities between this and the Asbury Park Press. They're owned by the same media group. So thusly, they're going to look rather similar. This is just lazy design. <laughs> but let's get into this. HBCU funding at risk in Senate. This is written by Dan Novak for Capital News Service. Okay. Historically, black colleges and universities in Maryland may lose more than $4 million in federal funding if Congress does not reauthorize mandatory spending for those institutions beyond the current academic year. And just in Maryland, Maryland's HBCUs facing a funding cliff due to congressional inaction, Senator Ben Cardin of Maryland said Tuesday on the Senate floor. The Future Act renewing more than $255 million for HBCUs and other minority-serving institutions was passed unanimously by the House on September 17th, but stalled in the Senate. Funding is guaranteed only through the 2019-2020 academic year after the Senate failed to meet the September 30th deadline. Question. Like, then why is it, like, if y'all getting, like, you know, uh, Senate, uh, you know, funding, why is tuition so damn high at these places? Continued support is imperative, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore said in a statement. Senate Health, Edu Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee Chairman Lamar Alexander from Tennessee has blocked the measure, instead backing a Higher Education Act reauthorization bill that would include long-term funding for HBCUs. Cardin said support for minority-serving minority institutions should not be in the balance while Congress tries to work out a broader reform package. The reauthorization of the 1965 Higher Education Act has failed to pass for several years. The FUTURE, because it's, all, you know, because it's in all caps, Act gives a breathing room to continue to negotiate the full reauthorization of the Higher Education Act without holding those historically underfunded institutions as hostage, Cardin said. Like, but don't y'all don't have coffers, right? Like, I mean, don't you guys have so many people going out from these HBCUs and making so much money? I mean, don't you guys have, like, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, money... To, to, to spare, right? Uh, Victor Santos, vice president for government relations at the Thorogood Marshall College Fund, an HBCU advocacy organization, said institutions cannot afford to wait for a comprehensive higher education act that is unlikely to be passed on the foreseeable future. Realistically, the money needs to be picked up before the end of this year in order to make sure that our schools don't have to make some really hard decisions. Eh, well, maybe you should. I mean, seriously, like, it's but that's the thing. It'll all get um, knocked back onto the students. That's the jacked up part. A section of the Higher Education Act provides money for things like renovations, advertising, lab and library materials and other academic services with a focus on science, technology, engineering and math fields. The Future Act would have authorized funding for an additional two years. This continuation of funds will have a negative impact on HBCU's missions and goals. HBCU's academic programs, student services, global and international efforts will be affected, UMES said. Well, shouldn't the only efforts there be to educate people? But no, 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 they're a university. So, you know, we have to do this and we have to be out there and do that. We have to do our, have research and stuff. I mean, what kind of research is coming out of, you know, HBCUs like, other than like, you know, the highly biased type? This type, this type, this year, UMES is receiving $899,760. Coppin State University is receiving $894,657. Bowie State University, $1,179,29. And Morgan State University, $1,347,931. That's a, yeah, that's a lot of money. Of course, they're going to sit there and be like, oh my goodness, we need this money. It's, it's money. Of course, it's <laughs> 
<laughs> but the question is, do they? I mean, shoot, man, start cutting, like, trim some of that fat. Maryland Democrat Senator Chris Van Hollen urged his colleagues on the Senate floor October 20th, 24th, to unanimously pass the funding in order to provide HBCUs with more certainty in their on their budgets. These institutions have a plan now for what's going to happen next year, and they can't budget and can't plan on hope, Van Hollen said. There is really no time to waste. Some HBCUs around the country have already projected budgets and notified Thanks, boss. I have notified employers, employees, their posi seriously stop. Their positions are in jeopardy, according to Thurgood Marshall College Fund President Harry Williams. These are real jobs held by people who interact with students every day in programs that play a critical role in graduating and retaining students in the STEM fields. Among other disciplines, Williams wrote on in, in October's 14th letter to the Senate. The longer we wait to give certainty to these universities, the more institutions will be left with no choice but to be in the winding down programs that mater that well, like what like the gender studies. Please get rid of the gender studies and all that other nonsense that a lot of these uh, professors are spewing because you got to realize like I mean HBCUs, much like urban communities and centers like that, they're like you know they're liberal hubs for terrible ideas. Part of the reason, probably part of the reason, my man was like, oh yeah, I'm a communist. Like bro, what are you what are you talking about? So begin winding down programs that, material benef that materially benefit students and employees alike and strip away the institutional knowledge bases, bases that our schools have built over time, he said. Alexander, following Van Hollen's comments on the Senate floor, reiterated the importance of passing its comprehensive bill, which, in addition to long-term HBCU funding, would simplify the free application for, student, for federal student aid, extend Pell Grants to incarcerated students, and allow Pell Grants to be used for short-term programs. Democrats say the measure doesn't go far enough. Of course they wouldn't, because, geez, like, and no one's sitting here thinking of how to make college more affordable, right? Like, <laughs> it's just like money hey man like all these gigantic numbers throw out the money with all respect this is no way to help historically black colleges or minority serving institutions alexander said adding that the future act is a short-term budget gimmick van Hollen responded by saying the senate should look to into those institutions themselves to determine whether the funding is needed I would say, I would just say to the chairman of the committee that I believe the best judge for what's good for HBCUs are HBCUs, he said. While we would all like to work towards comprehensive reform and reauthorization on higher education, there's no need to wait on this provision. So prescribe now, get the offer, and that's about it. So the deal is, is that, you know, they, they trying to get this money for these schools. Um, personally, I don't see why not. But at the same time, these schools really should be with the amount that they're charging students and stuff like like they this money should be, you know, what I'm saying like there. But apparently, I mean, it's money. Right. So, hey, if you can get what's better than what's better than a million dollars, two million dollars. So <laughs> you can't. So I ain't going to sit here and knock them for wanting the cash. But at the same time, I mean, it's shoot there's some programs that really could go like go go away the things that don't equate to nothing you know like the like the gender studies programs and um you know a lot of the arts programs they can they can go they can be about they can go on their way in the stem stuff and finance and business stuff i think that would be like you know saying stronger but it is what it is i'm not in any of these boardrooms or anything else like that i just find it interesting i've just found the story interesting and like who's delivering it to us because i wanted to show you guys like you know how close how similarly this outlet and the app are designed the lazy bastards <laughs> like it's all coming from the same source trust and believe make no mistake guys it's like what six seven media conglomerates i think byron allen's purchasing one but at this point aren't we all media out like the ugh. I, I i don't think we'll ever be either ways guys that's it all the internet stuff if you liked it toss it a like dislike go ahead do that too nobody's scared of you sub if you enjoy my fantastic voice and you want to give videos like this every single day share because sharing is caring and youtube and bitch you like aren't the biggest fans and speak let me know what do you think i mean i mean uh pwis predominantly white institutions and hbcus should come together and just be school damn it Anyways, if you disagree, let me know what you think in the comments. And until the next one.